Uh, hello. Uh, well, um, if you are here, it's because you are one of my followers. You know? uh, and then uh, t today is uh, uh, October. October is six, uh, five, eight, six, 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 six of. Six, well, I don't even believe I am living. No, and uh, eight, six of uh, October no? of two, uh, 2016. And then, well, this is Donetsk, the center of Donetsk, uh, Donetsk city. Uh, it's uh, already, uh, uh, already autumn. Uh, it's, it's autumn. It's, it's not cold, but it's uh, was raining today. And here we have, uh, <coughs> well, my friend, that is uh, uh, Jarmo, no? Yes, Jarmo. Jarmo, Jarmo uh, you are uh, a, a, a guy that. Uh, you are, where are you from? Finland. From Finland? Uh, which city? Well, originally from Kerava, but last time I was be living in Vanta. Vanta is the airport city. When you land in Helsinki, you will land ah. in Vanta. Aha, uh -huh. you are coming from the north then, or from... Uh, uh, no, no, from the south. From the south, no? Yeah. Uh, and then uh, you are here from... Uh, uh, when you... I mean, uh, till, till, I mean, when you arrived to, to, to Donetsk? Uh, let's see, I think I arrived on 16th of last month. Mm -hmm. It must have been somewhere around 16th. Uh, uh, and then uh, you, 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 why are you here? What is your objective here, or well, what, what are you doing here? I have come to work in the in the Do, uh, Donai Donbas uh, news agency. And, and, and wh why you, do you want to work there? Uh, good question. I, I mean, a very big question. Um, I think this area, this region, these countries, these new republics don't get enough uh, coverage in the West. So I hope to. You know, just to tell the story, how it is here, about the people, about the events. I, I feel that they don't get uh, enough coverage. W when you started to be interested in the Ukrainian conflict? Well, I think, I, I think, like everyone, I was interested from the beginning. But in the beginning, I was following very strictly only Western media. I mm -hmm. was reading Helsinki Sanomat, it's the biggest newspaper in Scandinavia. I was reading The Economist. I was following BBC. I was following you know, the American paper and so forth. Uh, and of course, you know, the picture I got from there, them was that, you know, Putin has basically gone crazy. Mm -hmm. Angela Merkel said that he called Putin and Putin was his mentally insane. Mm -hmm. And now he has attacked um, first Crimea and then he has basically attacked Donbass. And now this is the, the reason for the conflict. Of course, I was very concerned because we in Finland, we have long border, 1,300 kilometers of border with Russia. Of mm -hmm. course, I'm very concerned, a lot of my friends were concerned that what is this, you know, we will soon have a war with Russia, certainly, now if Russia has gone mad. Uh, but then, slowly, slowly, I cannot remember, there's maybe not one event that happened, but I started to follow also other sources, al alternative sources, sources, Russian media, because in Finland we're told very strictly that all Russian media is propaganda. So do not look at it, do not read it, do not do anything about it. But then at some point I also started to look at uh, this forbidden material. <laughs> <laughs> forbidden material, no. That's and so here I, I learned that a different story appeared. Of course I did not understand which one is right, but I, I started to see that there could be another side to the picture. And then, and then you, you uh, change your point of view, no? Well, in, yes, slowly, slowly. I did not change it like, you know, like this. Of course I was, because I had to grown to this idea we have told in Finland and there's many Western uh, studies done that Finland has the freest media in the world. So of course, you know, I, I, I could not believe that I would, you know, it would not be so, that okay. I would be lied to. So slowly, slowly, I started to think that maybe it is so. Of course, it takes a long time because I was, I always was very interested in, in what the world, what was going on in the world. I read a lot. I subscribed to BBC, uh, sorry, The Economist. I subscribed to this, these Finnish very specialty newspapers or magazines about foreign affairs and stuff like this. But still I was, and then it takes a long time. If you learn something, you compile a lot of information and then you understand that possibly it's not the full picture. It takes a long time to, to uncompile it somehow. But, uh, uh, and then maybe you were looking no information also in Facebook, no, in some groups, no? Yes, yes. Then, then of course social media, I started to get maybe different kind of friends who think different ways because in the beginning I think all of my friends thought in the same way. So then I, yes, from Facebook feed, getting also different news, stuff like that. And so, uh, let's say that you, you, you came here just to help, no, in, in or forwarding the informa alternative information, no? Yeah, 
Yes, I, I really came to help. I mean, I'm not here for money because you should not come here for money. There's not a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. <laughs> and then, and then, I want to say, what, what your friends are thinking about you? Uh, difficult to say. I mean, I think some some might think I'm a Putin, Putin troll. Putin is paying me a lot or something like that. Some might think I'm, I'm crazy somehow that I have lost my mind that I think now Russia is uh, save, will save the world. In fact, I do. I now think quite highly of Russia, but still they think you know I'm crazy because I think this way, and and some might actually agree, but they are maybe they don't feel comfortable expressing this. And then there is still this group of people who applaud. They will say that you know this is a great thing that you're doing. So you, there's a different different. Uh, so you you, you uh, Putin is not that does not pay you, no? Well, <laughs> you know, I have some points in my pocket, but you know. No, I can say Putin is not paying, as far as I know, you know, uh, and, and I, the people I've talked to, I've never heard anybody getting any money from Putin, so, you know, it's, if he's paying, he's paying very, very little. What, what, what do you think about the concept of, uh, it's a new concept, that, because uh, three years ago, appeared, no? the, this concept of the Russian propaganda, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is a, is a, you think different than the NATO, uh, then you are a paid troll of Putin, no? Yes, that's, that's basically so you, you, are, you, you are using your freedom of speech and your freedom of thought, yes. you are uh, paid by Putin and you are um, somehow controlled by the Russian uh, propaganda, no? Yes, yes. You, you, you are, either you, you are paid or then you are this uh, stupid fool. Either you are a stupid fool or you are paid. There's no other alternative. It's just these two options. Well, m myself, I want to tell you that uh, I, I am saying all the time that I didn't came here to Donetsk or uh, just because uh, Donetsk people or because Russia. I, I came here just for Europe because I, I think I think yes, in, in, yes, in Europe, yes, yes, yes. In, in Europe have a lot of problems and there is a lack of freedom, yes. lack of freedom. Mm -hmm. And then I decided to come here to well uh, to show no the reality of of, 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 of Donetsk. No, yeah. what do you think about um, Donetsk? Well, I have to say I've been here now three weeks. In, in, in the summer, I was here for one week with the Finnish tourist group. Actually, mm -hmm. we we, are, we have a new tourist group coming up but, uh, from Finland. But uh, yes, I think it's a, it's a very nice city. We have we as you said, it's autumn. It's you know the weather is great. You know now it's almost snowing in Finland, so we have that. But on top of that, I think you know it's it's a it's a nice city. It has nice cafes. You know, I like sitting in cafes as you do. Let me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I enjoy this kind of culture. Yeah. You know, just walking around and having a snack and a cafe and having my computer there and you know doing this, this trolling. Putin troll, of course, for Putin and, and so forth. I'm no, just kidding. This is a joke. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but uh, yes. Yeah, so I, I I have enjoyed the city. You know, it's it's a uh, it's it's a. Pleasure, pleasurable place. Yes. Uh, this city, do you think that this city is occupied by Russian troops? Uh, yes, uh, that's something I think many people have in mind. That you know, if, if uh, uh, I have not seen any any Russian troops here, and you know, I have not seen many other troops. I have seen some. You know, there's people walking in in military uniform. They have they have BPR uniform on they have local army uniform on they have, of course the war is still ongoing so it's it's natural that you see people c coming in uniform but we don't have i've never seen tanks i've never seen uh, armored vehicles i've never seen any any uh, other cannons something like this so no I'm not. It, it, it looks like a pretty safe no the city no yeah i would say so i would say so i mean the the, the front line as i understand is only 10 kilometers away and i have visited once this um, in LPR, in, in Lugansk Big People's Republic, the front line. But yes, definitely, I mean, you can come here. At least I have not died yet. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, I have all my limbs left and so forth. You know, I, I have not felt threatened once during this time. Of course, I have been here a relatively short time, but during this time, I have felt safe. Let me say, I, I want to tell you uh, something about... Uh, so, do you think that here, did you see something like a little green man here or something? <laughs> yes, yes, I, I know, I know what you mean. Well, of course, you know, I think people will say that they might think that, okay, they have this cognitive dissonance, they might think that... Cognitive uh, dissonance, dissonance, no? yes, cognitive they, dissonance. They, they will have, co because, you know, me telling this kind of thing, so they will have cognitive dissonance and they will say that they are fooling you. They have this, they have the EPR uniform, but really it's Russian soldier inside. So <laughs> they are fooling you and you're being fooled like a stupid idiot. And you're here, here helping Russians, and you're helping Putin, and everybody's fooling you. You ask the people on the street, have you seen Russian soldiers? They still tell you not, and then they're fooling you. And you ask, you know, are you being, um, 
is there some terrorists running this place? They say no, they're fooling you. So I understand it's difficult to believe, but I have not seen any little green men here. So that's my honest opinion. Uh, what, what, what do you think? Um, uh, what, what do you think about the role of, uh, first of all, the role of Finland in this conflict? And also the second question is, uh, also I would like that you speak about the European Union, no? the European Union and the role of the European Union in the Ukrainian conflict. Mm, yes, uh, very good question. I think, first of all, Finland, well, I'm very happy that Finland has stayed out of NATO so far, you know, officially. This has been the result of people being, in my opinion, uh, you know, wise. They have not allowed for this. I mean, they have, if you, in the, if you ask Finnish people, I think it's for. 30% want to join NATO, something 50 do not and the rest don't, don't know. But still, you know, the political parties, they basically all want to join, but the, the general um, uh, public, know, opinion. public opinion is against. So they have not been able to join. This is a, this is a great thing. Actually, before I was pro-NATO, before I understand the whole picture, but now I've come to understand that we have a lot of wise people in Finland who have, you know, old people who know that this is not a good idea and so forth. But still, there's a big push, a huge push by the media, by the politicians to get Finland to join NATO. And they have managed to do some pretty tricky things, some, you know, very unlawful things. They have joined this, uh, they have signed this uh, memorandum of understanding, basically granting Russian, uh, I'm sorry, NATO troops to to come to Finland on to Finnish territory, mm -hmm. uh, basically on their own invitation. And this happened during last summer. We had the first NATO, uh, uh, this, this sort of landing practice where they, they landed to Finnish shore and so forth. And we had, we had US fighters in, in Finland and so forth. So basically it was the first instance that they used this, uh, this, this uh, memorandum of understanding. So basically Finland is not in NATO, but in Russian's eyes, I bet Finland already is 80% in NATO. And now we already, also today I was just reading that Finland is, is signing a, a separate uh, agreement with the US, uh, uh, sort of a Finland-US defense treaty. And this is again going around NATO because they cannot officially join, so they will do all these loops to go, go around. Okay, Finland is in a bad shape. In my opinion, if the conflict escalates, Finland will be the first to be thrown into the fire. You know, as Putin, Putin was visiting Finland during the summer and he said that uh, NATO would like to fight with Russians, uh, with Finnish troops, to the, to the last Finnish man. So I, I think this is the case. You know, it's, uh, we have a huge army, 250,000 men, very capable army, so NATO would very much like to use Finland as, uh, as a tool mm -hmm. against the Russians. And, in, uh, and the role of, of, of the European Union in this conflict? Yes, okay, so I think, uh, you know, unfortunately it's, it's so that the uh, European Union is, is uh, as a whole being used as a tool. It's the United States that for a very long time uh, have been, been used as the major tool for these globalists, the US Army, and they have been extorting Europe uh, also in this instance, I mean, uh, in the Ukrainian crisis. I mean, the, I think the European leaders in some cases have been able to do some um, agreements. For instance, Minsk II, which was in a way beneficial for Europe. They avoided the escalation of the conflict, but there's again a huge push to escalate the conflict from the <laughs> other side of the, the ocean. So basically, uh, the European Union is, is being pushed, pushed to, uh, to, to a conflict with Russia, in my opinion, by the US who are then controlled by these globalist forces, mostly it's, it's banking, banking powers and so forth. We probably don't have time to go into all the details, but still, this is my opinion and, and this is how I believe it is. And then uh, I want to tell you, uh, what do you think about well, your family, maybe, because you can hear no? your mom or... Yeah, your, <laughs> what, what, she's, a, she's, a, she's happy or happy or what? I suppose she has, my parents have always said that, you know, if I'm happy, then they're happy. So I'm, I'm very uh, lucky in that way that I have these supportive parents. And well, I suppose they saw during the summer when I came here first that I did not die here. Yeah. Because I think that's the, maybe the fear. If you tell somebody I'm coming here, they will you know, basically think that you will get shot, you will die very soon. So they, they see that I am here living, you know, not getting killed. I think that's the main thing for them. And, and, and you know, I've been able to tell them about how I feel. Maybe they don't share all my views, but they they understand that there's these different kind of uh, opinions and this is my 
based on my 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 studies, I have come to this conclusion, and I, I have made this decision on this. So they they understand. They understand. And then, and then uh, well, I suppose that some people that were your friends, they are not your friends anymore, no? I mean, I'm, I'm, <laughs> actually, they, they have not. I, I haven't had this kind of thing that uh, somebody would tell to my face. Maybe you know, one one or two times that you know you are fucking you know Putin or this kind of attack. So that doesn't happen very often, uh, and it has not I've had to happen from my my friends. But maybe there has been this sort of uh, less contact. <laughs> <laughs> less contact, no? Yes. Yeah, so that has, of course, uh, I understand that very well because. Because you know, if, if the world views are very conflicting, then uh, there, there is this again. We get into this cognitive dissonance, and it's not it's not a pleasurable feeling for a person to have their worldview threatened. I mean, that somebody's telling this kind of thing that you're basically told lies. Yeah. You know, every day you put TV on. You know, do you know that these people are lying to you, and, and you don't want to hear this kind of thing? So. I, yeah, I know because I I, I, I assume no that the, in, in in Finland there is a lot of propaganda, no. Well, uh, I, w I would say so because actually because we are in a very important position. I mean, as I said, we have a long border with Russia. We have a we have a very big army, and and if if I was looking for a conflict with Russia and I had Europe's map here, and I say okay, Ukraine is there. Okay, we have basically used that option. Then we have this other. We have NATO countries here. Then we have, okay, Belarus. Yeah, okay, and then we have Finland. A huge border, huge army. You know, I would put a lot of effort there. Of course, it's understandable. Of course, from the Western point of view, from these people point of view, they it will they will say that this is pure madness. You know, West does not want war. It's Russia that wants war. So if you tell these kind of things, they will say that, you know, you you you're crazy. You know, what what are you talking about? But unfortunately, this is the case in my opinion. Uh, and, and then, uh, what are your plans here? You you'll be here for a while or? Well, oh. yes, I, I have one one year Russian visa. So <laughs> like me, no? <laughs> <laughs> you have, like me, no? You have, you know, one year Russian visa, no? <laughs> yes, I have one year Russian visa, so that basically enables me to stay here for one year if I don't want to stay forever. Because, <laughs> if, but yes, so this is basically my 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 plan. How I see that uh, I, I don't have any any plans, but this at least uh, gives me a schedule, and I'm happy to be here now. I'd be very happy to the things I've been able to do in three weeks, all very he helping in Donai, but I was in, in Lugansk, uh, in LPR, helping with the, with the primaries, with the elections. Very important, again, stepping stone in, in, the, in the Republic's um, uh, you know, perspective, because they, they are not recognized states, they're in very much isolation. I've said they're in military isolation, information isolation, and also sort of a restriction of uh, traveling. The locals are not able to travel freely. Okay, now they can travel maybe to Russia with their local passports. But, but really, uh, yeah. So the primaries, I think, it's these small stepping stones towards that. You know, they will get recognized. But it takes time, and I'm ha I'm happy to be you know doing much more part in that process, giving them recognition because they really, they look, they see a foreigner, and they're basically telling that you know, please tell the world that <laughs> we exist. And of course, you know that touches your your soul. That you know, I want to, I want to do my small part. You know, helping. You. How, how you see? No, probably they are in Lugansk or around here. No, people. Well, uh, houses bombed, houses or destroyed. Yeah, no? yeah, yeah. Because me, me, really, I am all, all the time in the center. No? Really, this is my. Well, but I know you are more like a. a, a I mean, going to sub suburbs, no? the suburbs of Donetsk. So, yes, or, or yes, to. I have, I have been to some some uh, suburbs and and. Uh, well, I've been, I haven't been here that long either, but well, maybe some B went to my jacket, hopefully not. But, <laughs> but okay, yes. so I have seen some bombed buildings, and it's not, uh, it's, it's, I mean, I cannot, of course, I, I was not there when it was bombed. I cannot even un understand what it's like if there's bombs coming to your house. I have seen these, this, you know, destroyed buildings. I've heard horrific stories about, you know, people in the city getting you know shells landing you know the other side of the street and you know people dying and they carrying the dead and everything like this and you know you it's such another world even here it's such another world it's it's so impossible to understand that it still happens today and you know not far and I, I've heard this I've heard these shots so it's not it's it's close but it's yes so it's it's horrific it's horrific that it goes on and it's, it's it's almost impossible to understand that it, it happens. Here it's much closer, but in Finland it's like, you know, you don't even, you cannot understand that it happens. 
Well, uh, I want to thank you, uh, Jarmo, for participating in those videos. No, uh, in the well, uh, th thank you. No, we are here, uh, well, enjoying the no the 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 autumn. No, it's quite pleasant. No, here in, 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 in Indonesia, it's not so so cold like in Lithuania. No, <laughs> let's say no, <laughs> or in Finland. And uh, thank you for your experience. And well, yes, uh, thank you for following me. No, because uh, uh, this is a Gonzo blogger. You can find me in YouTube, and also in uh, Facebook, and also in Twitter. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for everything. Yes. Thank you. <laughs>